Hello everyone, this is Colleen Lemma, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger from SacredSoulEmpowerment.com. Here to do your weekly intuitive reading for Monday, November 30th through Sunday, December 6th, 2020. For this week's weekly reading, we'll be using the Psychic Tarot by John Holland for the main message for everyone. And your special message card this week, depending on your stone of choice, will be coming from the Angels and Ancestors deck by Kyle Gray. Just a reminder that this brings us into a new month, the last month of 2020. I hear a lot of you out there saying, yay, the last month of 2020. So be sure to be on the lookout for the monthly intuitive reading for the month of December on my YouTube channel. It will give us an overview of the energies ahead for December, the astrological transits of significance, as well as messages from our angels and guides, along, of course, with your special message card of choice. Okay, so let's go ahead and start this week's weekly reading by looking at your stones of choice. Now, I just very recently wrapped a whole new set of special intention pendants, and so that is what we're going to use for our stones of choice this week. The first stone of choice is tektite. And now tektite comes from a meteorite that crashes to Earth. So it's from the stars, basically. And this powerful black tektite stone is wrapped in silver and Reiki charged with the vibration of master number 22, number of transformation and power on all planes of existence. It's infused with the energies of Neptune, planet of astral travel and communication with those of the higher realms. It's also uh, with the energy of Uranus, the planet of the connection to the God mind and the ability to channel information. This has been set with intentions of opening up the crown chakra for increased claircognizance and the ability of interdimensional, interdimensional communication and also infused with a connection to our star brothers and sisters of the highest vibration of light. So that again is the tektite. Your second stone of choice here is a beautiful Lemurian seed quartz crystal. So this beautiful Lemurian seed record keeper quartz crystal is wrapped in silver and it has been Reiki charged with the vibration of master number 11, the number of the light worker energy. It's infused with the qualities of Aquarius for freedom and independence, with the element of air for support with inspirational ideas and supportive communication. It's infused with the energies of Major Arcana, the magician, the creator of one's own reality through magic and alchemy, and also with the energies of Archangel Raziel. I like to call him the Merlin, the magician archangel for awareness, understanding, and downloading of esoteric wisdom and knowledge. So this again is our Lemurian Seed Record Keeper Quartz Crystal. And then the last stone of choice here this beautiful and powerful smoky quartz crystal. Now this beautiful smoky quartz special intention pendant is wrapped in silver and Reiki charged with the vibration of master number 22, number of the master builder and manifester and power and protection on all planes. It has the energies of Pluto infused into it, planet of transformation and transmutation of lower vibrational energies the activation of the crown and the root chakras for opening to higher universal energies and bringing them down through all of the other chakras to ground them in third dimensional reality or on the third dimensional earth plane. And it's also infused with the guidance and assistance of Archangel Michael for protection and to clear away lower energies and with King Solomon for his powerful protection, divine magic and space clearing abilities. So again, your stones of choice for the week are the Black Tektite Stone, the Lemurian Seed Record Keeper Crystal, and the Powerful Smoky Quartz Crystal. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the astrology for the week. We start out on Monday, November 30th, and I 
mentioned this in last week's video. Even though this is a part of this week, it happens very early Eastern time on Monday the 30th of November. So we did include it in last week's video, but we have a full moon lunar eclipse at eight degrees of Gemini. So full moons are when our, emotional, our emotions are more intensified, right? People's emotional reactions are, are high. It is also a time of a completion phase. Full moons, when they become full, then they're in that waning phase thereafter, is all about releasing or letting go and a completion of some sort of cycle of energy. Now, the fact that this is a lunar eclipse is very important because it intensifies that energy exponentially. So not only do we have that full moon energy in Gemini, which is of the mental realm, the mind, our thoughts, our perceptions, our belief systems. Gemini is all about messages or information. Communication of all types is under the Gemini realm. So it intensifies those things greatly because it's a lunar eclipse. So there's some sort of completion phase here that's going on. I want to say there's a completion phase of a way of thinking, of a way of perceiving something, and what knowledge we believe we have on, from a third dimensional perspective that perhaps we need to broaden that uh, perspective to include other ways of thinking or believing in something. So this lunar eclipse also, again, intensifying this full moon energy could bring in some messages, uh, communications, either from higher realms, but also from people. This, you know, Gemini is kind of the environment. So this is messages or information coming from other people, family, friends, loved ones. Uh, situations, work, you know, just communication of all kinds here. It's also the sign of teaching, Gemini. So we could be learning something new and there could be a, a new, whether it's a, a formal type of class or whether it's learning something new from a spiritual perspective. It all depends on where in your chart this full moon lunar eclipse is falling. Um, this type of energy, information, uh, messages, communication is going to be highlighted. And again, it could deal with any part of your life. This kind of completion phase could deal with any part of your life. But again, it depends on where in your chart it falls. This full moon lunar eclipse on Monday is in a sextile to Chiron, who is the wounded healer, the one that rules our past life wounds. Now, a sextile is a, an aspect of opportunity. So there's an opportunity here to heal something, probably through speaking your truth through using your voice and communicating in some way. This full moon lunar eclipse is also in what we call an inconjunct aspect to Venus in Scorpio. And Venus rules uh, our relationships and our partnerships. And she also rules money and finances, our personal resources or other people's personal resources, uh, especially it being in Scorpio. So there is some sort of adjustment here that we're needing to make within our relationships or an adjustment we're needing to make in regards to our personal resources during this full moon lunar eclipse phase. That brings us into the month of December. So on Tuesday, December 1st, we have Mercury, that planet that actually rules Gemini and rules this full moon lunar eclipse, moving out of Scorpio and into the sign of Sagittarius. Excuse me a moment. <coughs> And speaking about speaking your truth, right? Having some sort of tickle in my throat or coughing could mean one of two things. Either <clears throat> I'm needing to speak my truth with someone about something, or I'm picking up on some of you out there as, an, as a reminder that perhaps that throat chakra <clears throat> is blocked in some way or needs to open up and that you need to be communicating something to communicate your truth, to share some sort of uh, thoughts or belief systems or information with somebody else. So again, Mercury is now moving into Sagittarius on December 1st and <clears throat> December 1st. And Sagittarius is the sign of um, the big picture. It's about broad horizons or broader perspectives or perceptions. It is about inspiration and optimism. 
It is clairvoyant in nature, so very perceptive on a clairvoyant um, kind of level. Mercury in Sagittarius, again, is, is talking big, sharing ideas, sharing your, your perceptions, perspective, or belief system, sharing your philosophies. It's also the sign of the teacher, just like Gemini is the sign also of either teaching or learning or information. Sagittarius is a sign, again, of information and learning and teaching. So we have a lot of uh, energy here that's wrapped up in, in this idea of higher information, higher knowledge, sharing that wisdom or sharing those philosophies or belief systems that you have or teaching to other people. Mercury moving into Sagittarius for the next approximately three weeks or so is going to really heighten our ability to share our perspective and perceptions with other people. And if you thought about teaching some sort of a class or a workshop, perfect time in the next three weeks to initiate something like that or to initiate writing a blog or writing a book or rewriting your website or updating something that deals with communication. It's going to be a more lighter, brighter, optimistic kind of time. Uh, people can get more excitable with Mercury and Sagittarius, but it also, again, has the potential to bring in this vision and when we bring in this vision or when we have this vision on a mental body level it can help to create it on a third dimensional more grounded spiritual level eventually on friday the 4th of december mercury is now in a positive connection to chiron the wounded healer chiron is an aries right now and mercury with chiron is going to be healing through speaking our truth or healing on a mental body level, our thoughts and belief systems or perceptions. This is a positive aspect. So, you know, we're still talking about Chiron, which brings in past life wounds. So there may still be um, some sort of healing that needs to be done on our thoughts or belief systems or our perspectives regarding something. But this positively supports us being able to adjust our thinking patterns or adjust our belief systems in such a way that it aligns us with this healing process. Or, again, to bring in healing in regards to communication with other people that we need to have that conversation with. On Saturday, the 5th of December, we have Venus, the ruler of partnerships and personal resources, who is in Scorpio right now. And first she makes a positive connection to Neptune, the planet that rules the spiritual realm, the planet that is very elusive and sometimes brings in confusing energies, but it rules the intangibility of things. It rules things that cannot be readily or easily seen or touched or, or experienced because it rules that spiritual realm. So that's a positive connection. So I feel like, you know, there's unconditional love, there's compassion, there's an increase in our psychic clair maybe our clairsentience especially or our empathic ability or it could be just an increase in all of our psychic abilities but then later that day she moves on to make what's called an inconjunct aspect to mars now that could be either sat late late saturday or early early sunday morning depending on what part of the world you're in this inconjunct to mars i mean this is the lovers right venus is the feminine mars is the masculine they're coming together in this strange in conjunct uh, aspect, which means there's an adjustment that needs to be made. The adjustment may be within relationships of some sort, a relationship matter or situation, or the adjustments could be needing to be made um, in regards to a financial matter because Venus does rule finances. She's in Scorpio, which rules other people's finances as well. Mars is an activator planet. He puts energy and action and forward movement towards you know, any particular area of life. In this case, it is in relationships and finances. And then on Sunday the 6th, we end with Mercury in an inconjunct to Uranus. Now again, Mercury just went into Sagittarius, light and bright and optimistic Sagittarius, and it's in an inconjunct to the Great Awakener, Uranus, the one who rules the God mind, the one that has all of these higher ideas and perceptions and futuristic thinking and it's in Taurus right now and Taurus is the sign that rules uh, our personal resources money and finances it also rules our values 
Our sense of self-value or self-worth is also ruled by Taurus. So it could be uh, us needing to adjust again how we're thinking or believing about ourselves and looking at it from this higher perspective, which to me is the higher soul self perspective, merging into your higher soul self, getting, getting, moving away from the lower ego mind, which Mercury rules the lower ego mind, and moving into that higher self mind, which is that Uranus energy. And as we do so, this can bring in a lot of gifts for us. Um, Taurus also rules uh, gifts and presents. <clears throat> so it can definitely bring, and I want to say first we're visualizing it or we're seeing it. This is a great time for visualization because if we use the Mercury and Sagittarius to visualize it and see it in our mind's eye, Uranus and Taurus can help to manifest it at some point for us. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the messages from our angels and guides for the week. And we turn over the seven of mental is what this is called in this deck. And the seven of mental is like the seven of swords. And it says deception and envy at the bottom, but I feel like it's less about those words and it's more about this confusion aspect. Remember how we talked about Neptune ruling illusion, confusion, delusion. It's connecting with Venus this week. Mercury is, is moving into Sagittarius. It's going to be trining Chiron. It's going to be in conjuncting Uranus. And again, we've just had that full moon lunar eclipse on Monday at eight degrees of Gemini, which also rules our mental body. <clears throat> so I feel like there's something happening here to where we're needing to take the mask of illusion off. You can see that this person is kind of taking off this mask that was around his eyes. Now the mask actually does have eye holes in it, but he was seen he was seen through that mask in a more confined way, if you can understand that. It's like, you know, if you have a mask on, let's say there's portions of that mask as you can see on either side here that are maybe disrupting his his perception all the way around. Now he's fully taking off that mask. He's fully allowing himself to become aware of and see with clarity or see with more clarity what's happening. Now, initially, he might feel, again, confused because the Seven of Swords can sometimes bring about some sort of confusion energies. Uh, the number seven numerologically can bring some sort of doubts or concerns or anxieties or confusion. So this is on, again, on a mental body level where our thoughts are uh, anxious our belief systems are confused. We're not fully seeing clearly what's going on or what's happening, but we're starting to because he's taking off that mask. And I feel like he's a little, I don't know if stunned, that's not quite the word I'm looking for. I feel like he feels a little bit in shock by something, by whatever it is that he's starting to gain clarity over. Now, of course, um, I feel like the clarity is going to come with time. I don't think that it's going to fully come this week, especially so close to the the full moon lunar eclipse, which by the way, we have, you know, as we'll talk about in the December intuitive video, we have a new moon solar eclipse, the middle of December. So there may not be clarity here for <clears throat> a couple of weeks or maybe even a, a month or two um, before things become totally clear. Um, but this is about using discernment too. The number seven is about using discernment with what you're seeing, what you're perceiving, what's being communicated to you. I feel like that's also part of the message for the week. Let's look at the second card here. The second card is the four of uh, emotions, the four of, of emotions. This is an emotional card. It's the four of cups in the traditional tarot. And you can see at the bottom, it says discontent and boredom. Uh, again, not necessarily focused in on those words, but I feel like this can be being closed down a little bit emotionally. Um, Venus right now, you know, it is also highlighted this week as she connects with Neptune and then she connects with, with Mars. And I feel like there's something to where we're either emotionally protecting ourselves or we're emotionally closed off to something, 
or we're feeling a lack of joy and happiness in our lives. Again, joy and happiness comes from the emotional body being open and experiencing life in a positive, bountiful, you know, beautiful, blessed way. So this to me looks like almost like this person's giving up on their dreams. That's kind of the message I get. He's got his back turned to this beautiful scenery in the background, this beautiful castle in the background. He's turned his back on that. And whether he's decided that he's not going to gain his hopes, dreams, and wishes, or whether he's been hurt recently by some sort of situation or relationship matter, he's kind of got his back turned to that and he's closed off to that potential now. So this is kind of a message to everyone to not close yourself off to that potential. Don't, don't um, close off your emotional body from happiness, from joy. And if something has recently hurt you or upset you in some emotional way, know that it's something that will heal in time. This will pass in time. Right now it looks like we have some mental confusion and we have some emotional feelings of being distraught here with these first two cards. But again, the eclipse energies shakes things up. That's what eclipses do. It shakes things up in our life so that we make the changes that are appropriate for us to get realigned and back on track with what our soul's truth is. But clearly the message here is don't turn your back on your dreams because they are still there and you can still move towards and create and accomplish and manifest them. Take some time to heal if you must, for sure. Take some time to heal, but don't fully close yourself down from it. Let's look at the last card. The last card here is, ooh, I love the power card. So this is like a major arcana eight called power, of course, in the traditional tarot. It's called the strength card, which is usually seen with a lion and it's usually with a maiden or a woman with a lion, right? This one has uh, half the face of a man here and half the face of a lion. So this is kind of like merging the energy of your third dimensional ego self, if you will, and your higher dimensional, higher soul self. This is about you taking back your power, owning your power, merging with your power, feeling empowered, being empowered, being a leader, um, being confident, being courageous, taking charge of some sort of situation. For sure, the number eight, numerologically, is about your sense of power. Now, the number eight can have feelings of disempowerment or someone taking your power away, or some power and control issues with other people, which this card may also indicate. Um, but the higher aspect is being your own authority and balancing the different aspects of your life in order to take back your power and to feel empowered and be empowered as you move forward. And based on the two previous cards, I think that at least in part, we're needing to empower ourselves in regards to our own thoughts and belief systems which is the seven of mental card. And with our emotions and feelings also, we need to empower ourselves, which is related to by the four of emotions card. So we have a card in the background, you may have noticed. And this was a card that um, actually fell out when I was shuffling the deck. And it fell out upright so I could see what it was. And it's a card that relates to the month of December's energy. So I'm, I'm going to probably from a different deck show you this particular card again, although it'll have different symbolism on it as I use a different deck. But this card when it fell out onto the floor when I was shuffling for this week's weekly reading is the card that the month of December is vibrating to. And the message that I heard also was that because this full moon lunar eclipse happens on the last day of November as it kind of transports us or heralds us into the new month of December, that it also related to um, the eclipse energies, the full moon lunar eclipse, the, the new moon solar eclipse that we're going to have in December, which intensifies energies and changes and redirections and freeing ourselves from the old and getting ready to birth something new. It's a real death and rebirth kind of thing with the eclipses. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this card and it is Major Arcana 16. And in the traditional tarot, it's called the Tower card. In this deck, it's called Disruption. Now again, when I do the monthly reading, I'll probably show you a different rendition from a different deck of this card as it does rule the month of December. But the message that came out to me um, was 
that with the eclipses, the death and rebirth energies, the redirecting energies, the changing energies that kind of comes with that, along with it being the last month of the year, right? Getting ready for a new energy of 2021. So we're wrapping up details and we're needing to kind of complete certain situations or energies in our life was that this disruption card was doing just that. It's reorganizing our energy. It's reorganizing, reorganizing our energy situationally with situations and circumstances in our life, but it's also reorganizing, now you can say disrupting, but I like reorganizing better. It's also reorganizing our energies on an inner soul level, on an energetic level, as kind of depicted by this picture. This picture shows a person and he's kind of disassembled a little bit. You know, he's shaken up a little bit and disassembled. And that's so the energies, situations, circumstances, our own belief systems, thoughts, emotions, our own soul direction can be realigned, which again is going to be partly from these eclipses in the, in the end of this year. So we can realign ourselves to move um, in a direction that we're meant to follow, okay? So if you're feeling a little bit discombobulated right now or coming up, then keep that thought in mind that, that things are being kind of disrupted or disassembled so that they can be reassembled and realigned in a new and better way. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at your special message card depending on your stone or special intention pendant of choice. So for those of you that chose the Tektite, Excuse me, I had a little itch in my nose there. So for those of you, special message card for the Tektite people, divine truth for the Tektite people for this week, Tektite people. This one's calling my attention. And it is High Priest, High Priest. And it says at the bottom, intend and create. So the High Priest is a religious or spiritual figure with a lot of power, right? He's got a staff in his hand. He's got, I don't know if it's a, a hawk or some sort of messenger bird in front of him. He's even got a wing as if um, like a bird-like sort of wing here saying that he's connected to the higher realms because as birds have feathers and wings, they, are, they fly high in the sky, right? So they, high, they, they fly, you know, the, the metaphysical kind of meaning to that is that they're more in connection with that higher wisdom, that higher knowledge, those higher messages. So not only does he have his own guide, messenger bird, to give him some of those higher messages, but he also has his own higher soul self-connection to the higher realms to kind of gain or acquire or become aware of the guidance that is being given to him from his own higher soul self as well as his angels, guides, and ancestors. Now, the staff as the high priest is this, his magical tool, knowing that he can visualize and create and intend and manifest whatever it is that he desires, which is another good thing to do during these eclipses, right? With this full moon lunar eclipse, thereafter we want to release, let go, uh, one of my friends calls it write and burn. So write out what it is you want to release and then burn it as a ceremony. Um, you can do other releasing types of ceremonies. Um, whatever it is that you're guided to do, lighting a candle, um, sitting by the ocean or standing in the ocean, depends on where you are, are in the world. Um, you could take a walk in the woods. So, you know, that would be a time of releasing the death part of things, right? And the new moon solar eclipse that occurs is going to be, and that's going to be on December 14th, but that will be a time of rebirth, a time to re redirect, a time to create something new, a time to, you know, send your intentions of what it is that you'd like to create thereafter and through the year 2021, what it is that you want to manifest for yourself. So the high priest energy is definitely saying that you have the magic within you, and maybe you have a magical tool, like a magic wand as well, uh, or crystal of some sort, but you can intend, visualize, and create, and then manifest what it is that you desire. Listen to the messages from your angels and guides, or the information that's coming in from other people, 
or from around you in situations, but also connect with your higher soul self here to the higher wisdom of the universe. All right, let's take a look at the special message card for those that chose the Lemurian. The Lemurian seed, record keeper crystal, divine truth for them, divine message, you know, okay. The one on the bottom is calling my attention. Arrow, I love that, arrow. Arrows are very direct. It says at the bottom, surround yourself with protective energy. Now, I didn't feel that, you know, and now that, that could be a message as well. Surround yourself with protective energy. But what I felt or saw when I saw the arrow was Mercury going into Sagittarius. Because Sagittarius, if you know what the glyph of Sagittarius looks like, it looks like an arrow on its side like this. It's like the archer has this uh, bow and has an arrow and it's usually at a slant. And that's what I saw when I turned over the arrow card. So I'm going to go um, with that thought that Mercury moving into Sagittarius for the next th approximately three weeks is going to be a good thing for you. It's going to help you to be more direct with your speech, communication, thoughts, and intentions. And Sagittarius definitely is that. Sagittarius is opinionated. They are blunt. They speak the truth. They're honest. And this might be a time where because you've been maybe holding back in the last few weeks or even months with speaking your truth, that now that Mercury and Sagittarius or Mercury is going into Sagittarius on the 1st of December, that it will assist you and support you in being more direct and speaking your truth. Now you have to kind of be careful not to be too blunt that you are so honest and truthful that you hurt others' feelings, because that sometimes can happen with Sagittarius. But it's definitely going to be a positive for you in, in being honest and speaking your truth and getting to the point. You know, arrows have a point. So what is your point? What is the point that you need to get to or share with someone else? Okay, let's look at that, that message that it says here. Surround yourself with protective energy. There is kind of like a shield here. Um, a shield behind the arrow. The arrow has a Native American feather on it. So this you know, it kind of brings me to that Native American type of protection. Um, surrounding yourself with uh, sage, you know, with the smudge sage or sweet grass. Um, you might need to smudge yourself or sage yourself and do a ceremony of some sort. You might want to call in your Native American or shamanic ancestors of the light for some sort of protection or guidance. Um, I'm just having a really Native American feel here. Um, I feel like some of you have had past lives as a Native American. And this might be, I feel like they're almost showing me that some of you have had past lives to where you were in battle. And there's some sort of um, resonance to that battle energy that's being played out in your now life to where you feel like you're being wounded again or you have to protect yourself. Just like you needed to protect yourself in that past life Native American um, kind of battle, if you will. Um, so there's some sort of connection there for some of you with, with Native American lifetime that needs to be, um, you need to become aware of and understand a little bit more. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the special message card for those that shows the smoky quartz. Smoky Quartz, that powerful Smoky Quartz that rules both the crown and the third eye. Oh my goodness, these two cards are both calling me. I'm going to pull both of them. I'm going to pull both of them. <laughs> okay, this one is Trader. Exchange energy to create abundance. Exchange energy to create abundance. Okay, there's something here about needing... It's like something about the give and take of energy is not equal right now. So I feel like some of you are in a situation, maybe it's a work or career situation, maybe it's a, a, a family or home and family or even a personal relationship situation where I feel like there is an imbalance. Things are not balanced as far as the energy being exuded by you and the energy that you're receiving back in that situation. So. I feel like um, there's a need here to somehow realize it first and know that it's 
unequal and that brings me back to that that power card back here right so there's some something disempowering about that energy not being equal there's not equal give and take or compromise happening in some sort of situation so you need to take back your power and bring things back into a sense of equality to where that energy becomes balanced again now maybe this card here will give us more information heart to guardian love and let yourself be loved so this is telling me that some of that inequality for some of you might be on your end that people family friends um, a significant other is giving you energy but you might be a little closed off from it because of a own lack of self-love or lack of self-worth pattern that's playing out for you or because of an old wound within that particular family, friend, or partnership relationship that has maybe recently happened. So you've kind of closed right down, you kind of clamped down. And so now maybe they're giving more energy to you and now you're kind of closed off from returning that energy equally. Now, either way, and, and whether it's the opposite way too, to where you're giving, you're giving, you're giving, and you're not receiving back, or maybe the tables have turned and maybe it was one way first and now it's the other way. But this is about, to me, this message means to focus on self-healing, focus on self-love, focus on healing your sense of self-value and self-worth. And it doesn't mean to totally pull away from the other person, right? But as you heal yourself and as you focus on giving yourself the love, appreciation, gratitude, and attention that your soul or inner child is longing for, that can eventually bring things back into balance with this equal exchange of energy. In fact, I feel like both sides, now we can't really say what the other person or the other side is going to do, right? But, and this can, again, it might be in a work or career situation, but both sides of the equation needs to focus on healing of self a little bit. It's interesting because she's got a heart over her heart chakra. She's called the heart guardian. She's supposed to be loving and letting herself be loved. He's got his hand over his heart chakra as well. So there's definitely a message about healing heart chakra wounds here. And this might be current or the, the heart chakra wounds might be from the past and from past people or from even past lives. And maybe we're replaying out that energy in new situations or in, with new people. So the message definitely is, is that there needs to be healing um, on both sides, but we can only focus on ourselves, right? We can send love and light and healing to the other person or persons, but we can't make the other person bring healing to themselves. And so what's most important is for us to be able to bring that healing to ourselves and I just noticed too she's got angel wings here so needing to really connect with the higher heart to connect with the higher soul self to connect with her kind of cosmic beingness basically and know that she is unconditional love unconditional love is the truth of who she is all right I hope everyone has liked this weekly intuitive reading Again, be on the lookout for the monthly intuitive reading. Uh, if it's not up yet, when you watch this, it will be up shortly. And I send you all lots of love and light. Please like and share, comment on the video, subscribe to the channel if you like this video. Um, I appreciate all of your love and support and your supportive comments and your suggestions to help me get the word out and expand myself um, even more to more people. Um, I appreciate everything, all the energy that you've given to me in the past and, and in the present moment. Sending you lots of love and light during this holiday season. And we will talk to you again very soon. Love and light, everyone.